we are going to perform a lab that demonstrates half-lives and the process of radioactive decay. However, we're not going to use real radioactive nuclei. We're going to simulate it using M&Ms. So the rate at which a radioactive isotope decays can help us determine how useful or how dangerous that isotope may be. Isotopes that decay rapidly can be useful for medical procedures because they pose no long-term risks. Isotopes that decay slowly remain radioactive for a longer period of time and can be considered much more hazardous. One way to measure the rate of radioactive decay is called half-life. Half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of a sample to decay. So the whole point of this activity is to simulate that process and show you the concept of half-lives. We're going to start with 120 M&Ms. We're going to make some assumptions about these M&Ms. Okay, we're going to be creative and call these M&Ms M&Mium. That's our radioactive element. When we perform this experiment, if we can see the M, then that M&M has yet to decay. If the M on the candy is face down, that represents a nucleus that has given off some form of radiation, an alpha, beta, or gamma particle, and has now become a stable nucleus. So we're going to remove the stable nuclei and leave the nuclei that have yet to decay by alpha, beta, or gamma particle emission. So as I mentioned, we are starting with 120 M&Ms in our cup. We're going to do that for both trials. So if you're following along with the lab, you should enter 120 for our initial count of undecayed M&Ms. So now we're going to pour the M&Ms out of the cup, lay them flat, and then we're going to remove any M&Ms that have decayed. In other words, we're going to remove the candies that have the M face down, put them off to the side. After that, we're going to count the remaining M&Ms and record that number in our data table. We're going to pick up the remaining M&Ms, the ones that have not decayed, put them back in our cup, give the cup a good swirl, pour them back out, and then repeat the process. Remove any of the candies that have the M face down, and then count the candies that remain and put that number in our data table. We will continue with this process until we have either no M&Ms remaining or we have done this process seven times to complete our data table. After we've completed that seventh pour, we should have a total of M&Ms that have yet to decay and our data table for the first time should be completely filled out. Now we're going to repeat the procedure a second time and fill out the data for the column labeled second time. Look at those yellow ones carefully. I have the light open my eyes. Under 20 M&M's, how many should be left after this first one? 60. Or pretty much 60. Put those yellow ones carefully. 
It's the yellow section. It's the yellow section here. No, we're done. Hi, Phoenix. What up? What up? Your hands. Come on. It does not look like butter. What do they have to do, Dad? I'm just gonna write down this data you guys are collecting. They're watching you do the lab and everything. Okay, sure. Yeah. Cool. Flat them out. Oh my gosh, a bunch of these guys. I got the rest. Oh, what? Those are all in down? Yeah. After we have the data table filled out, we can then analyze the data. You're going to make a graph using Vernier graphical analysis on your computer. You should have that software installed on your computer. I have made a tutorial video that will help you construct the graphs for this lab. Make sure you check that video out. Once you're done with the graphs, you have completed your data collection. All that is left to do is analyze the data by completing the post-lab questions.